Hi everyone, I'm Melissa with Midnight Hour Oil. I wanted to come out and share some things with you today. It's a very stormy day here in West Virginia and um, you may hear some claps of thunder while I'm talking and probably the enemy is not gonna want me to be sharing what I'm sharing today. Something that's been stirring in my spirit based on a dream I had back on July 23rd and some things that I've listened to that just continue to stir within me concerning spiritual warfare and where the church is at concerning these things. And there's, there's a lot of different dynamics to spiritual warfare and things that we need to pay attention to uh, when we talk about walking in our authority in Christ. And I'm going to talk to you about one aspect today. Uh, because this is just stirring in me. I was watching an interview with someone and uh, this person, I'm not gonna say you know what show this person was on, but they were just sharing uh, a testimony of a time when they were in the hospital and, and they could see demons next to their bed and, and their daughter could see demons next to the bed. And uh, people were, they were talking about seeing demons next to the bed, but I, I haven't finished listening to it, but in over a half an hour, nobody has said anything about binding and casting those demons out. And I am waiting for that, and I'm hopeful that they did that, but I don't know that they did. And this is why I felt led to come out again and talk more and more about the topic of spiritual warfare and, and taking our authority in Christ and, and not letting the enemy just stand around our bed and speak death over us and try to take life out of us. Uh, church, we have to turn this around. We have to get grounded in the truth of God's word and learn to be diligent in taking our thoughts captive and making them obedient to Jesus and guarding the doors of our mouths, ensuring that every word that we speak is filled with life and salt and grace and not give the adversary any place in our lives. Back on July 23rd, I have this dream. All right, and I am on High Street, which is a street that was in my neighborhood growing up. And this symbolizes the high roads, uh, those who are walking with the Lord on the high road. And uh, as I'm walking, somebody comes up to me. I'm not sure if it was an evil man or an evil spirit, but uh, this person just starts to try to lead this conversation into negative dark things. And, and I recognize what they're doing. And I, I say to this person, I say, it's more important for us to be the light. Now, as soon as I said that, the person got a fidgety, annoyed, upset. They didn't want to hear about the light. So they turn and they're ready to walk away from me. But before they can get away, I very loudly say, because whatever we focus on, we make room for. Whatever we focus on, we make room for. And I wanted that demon or person to know I knew what they were trying to do. I understood their strategy. And so this is what I want to talk about today. How important it is for us to focus on the right things, to focus on the good things, the things that are going to inspire life, the things that are going to bring about blessings in our lives and will will not allow the enemy to bring curses into our lives. So what we focus on, we make room for, and we magnify those things as well. We magnify whatever we're talking about, whatever we're focusing on, and so every day we have that choice. What is it that we are going to focus on? What are we going to allow our minds to think about? Are we going to allow the enemy to captivate our minds? and then affect our words. And what? why would it matter what we speak? Why would it matter? Well, it matters because the enemy knows, he's very, very familiar with the truth of God's word and he's familiar with uh, the principles of God's word and he understands the very severe consequence for speaking words of death, all right? Proverbs 18, 21 says this, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. The spoken word is power, all right? God spoke everything that exists into existence by his spoken word. And when you look up this, these words, death and life in the Hebrew, 
the, the word that's used for death here, literally, I mean, it says death by violence as a penalty. And then the, the word life is living or alive. It can be literal or figurative. But we're talking about literal death, literal life based on what we speak. And this is why the stakes are so high, church, for what we think and making sure that we are taking our thoughts captive and making them obedient to the Lord Jesus Christ, and meaning ensuring that the thoughts we think line up with the truth of God's word, not just some random thing that gets that comes into our minds. The enemy will will uh, push thoughts into our minds, and it'll be like just out of the blue, something will just drop into our minds, and it'll be like that's an odd thing. But what happens is, is if a person holds on to that and begins to think about it, and uh, let's just say it's a it's a negative thought about. I don't know, like maybe you don't have enough of whatever and you don't like it and you're unhappy about it. And so you focus on that and you begin to focus more and more. Well, then you may actually speak it out loud. All right. So let's just say that thing is money and you feel like you don't have enough money. And so I'm going to speak that out loud that I never have extra money. And you can just keep saying it and saying it. And then all of a sudden you notice you never have extra money and people wonder, well, what did, what happened? See, I, I would, well, in the world of psychology, they call it self-fulfilling prophecy, but in the word of God, it's a biblical spiritual principle that what we speak has power behind it. And it gives the enemy a legal right to come against us if we are going to speak a word curse. All right, if we speak these things out, the enemy knows he has the right to bring them to fruition, whether you are a believer in Christ or not. If you give him a legal right to come in, he'll come in with your spoken words. This is why it's important to stop the, the, the negativity right here, right here in the mind where that battle begins and take those thoughts captive. Because if we don't, before you know it, the enemy will have you speaking out those negative things, those word curses. And then he can, he can come against you and he has the right to make those things happen. And it can be anything. It can be sickness, disease. Uh, it can be financial problems. It can be family problems, relationship problems, whatever it is. Now, the, the reverse of that is also true. The opposite side of that coin is true. That when we speak a blessing, when we speak positive words, that brings forth life, okay? We have the power to speak life into our lives as well as to speak death. But the problem is most people aren't even thinking about it. So they're not even thinking about what they say. All right. Now, anybody who I used to sit near when I, I was out in the uh, workforce, if they were speaking a, a curse, if they were speaking something negative over me, they heard me say all the time, I reject that curse in Jesus name. I reject that curse in Jesus name. I cannot tell you how many times I said that. And anybody who sat next to me would tell you, I spoke that all the time because I understand the dangers of allowing those words to fall on me as well as speaking them myself. And so we have to get vigilant about this church. This is one area where the enemy is really zeroing in on and trying to come against us. Now, Peter talks about it as well in 1 Peter 3.10. He says, whoever desires to love life and see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and lips from speaking deceit. Proverbs 13, 3, whoever guards his mouth preserves his life. He who opens wide his lips comes to ruin. Right, and there's many, many scriptures that talk about the words that we speak, but it is a spiritual principle and it is uh, something that our enemy is going to target us uh, and try to get us into a trap so that we are going to speak a word curse. But church, don't fall for that. All right, don't do it. Uh, it can be, it can be an uphill battle to fight the thoughts that try to come on us. And I know many of you know exactly what I'm talking about, but we have to, church. We have to resist because the consequence for not doing so is what? Going into some type of pit, going into discouragement, depression, despair. This is where the enemy leads us if we let him, if we let him take us down with lies and dark thoughts, if we give room, give way to the enemy, 
uh, to the darkness. It is, as I said in the dream, more important for us to be the light. And the way we do that is to keep our minds focused on the truth of God's word, walking in the light, doing the things that are pleasing to the Father. We know uh, loving one another, doing kind deeds for one another uh, wherever we're at, just letting his light shine through us. As the word says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Good deeds are a way that we let the light of Jesus shine through us. So I encourage you, church, take time to pray about these things. Ask the Father for a confirmation concerning this truth uh, regarding spiritual warfare. And uh, ask him to show you if there are any curses, word curses that anybody has spoken over you or that you have spoken over yourself that need to be renounced. And it's very simple. As the Holy Spirit brings those things to mind, just repent of having spoken the word curse or received the word curse and then uh, just plead the blood of Jesus over that curse break that curse in the name of Jesus and then whatever the word curse was whatever that negative thing was go find in the word of God the truth that speaks to that uh, that lie that the enemy brought against you and you speak that that truth and you memorize it and you write it down this is how we do warfare in our minds okay we cover our minds with the word of god we saturate our minds until the time when we are speaking it like it's natural the blessings flowing from our mouths as if it's second nature okay but it takes time it takes effort to get to that place church i encourage you to take that time you will not regret it as always it is my prayer that we will all continue to keep our lamps burning bright while we wait for Jesus. I love you all. God bless you.